So I'm going to try and give you an idea of what we're doing at the State Archives, just to try and give new researchers a bit of a foot in the door with 100 kilometres of records, which only 1% have been digitised. So this is a little bit about us, if you know nothing about us. Lots of records from Victoria's collective memory from the 1830s onwards. As I said, only 1% have been digitised. We've got very little metadata about those records. Thanks to um, tireless volunteers, we have some metadata, but a lot of it is missing, lots and lots of gaps. So what I'm about to show you is not only a visualisation tool, but it's a QA tool for those gaps. It shows us what's missing, so it makes visible the invisible. So the biggest problem is that how do you make it easy for new researchers to get a grip on the archives, understand the scope? Because we are a government archive. Uh, we don't want people wasting hundreds of hours coming in our front door looking for stuff we simply don't have. We don't have manuscripts, we don't have diaries. We have lots of private stories. Any interaction between individuals and government we have. And some of those are very private moving stories. But if you're looking for manuscripts and diaries, go to the State Library of Victoria. If you're looking for other things, go to Museum Victoria. But we don't have that material, so we don't want to waste people's time coming to the archive, looking for stuff we simply don't have. And we want to try and make it easy for people to find stuff, such as a Google search. The idea is, do you need to think like an archivist to do archival research? Can you just do research in any other way that you do it across the internet? Topic searches, keyword searches, put in a date. The other problem is that we generally have been presenting information as long lists. Let's see if this works. So this is generally how we've been presenting um, information on records from our online catalogue. When it works. You can sing a song now if you want. <laughs> okay? It's coming. Do you like the 1995 hourglass? <laughs> Isn't it fantastic? We're there. We're on the cutting edge. I didn't design this, by the way. It's like MySpace. It's fantastic. Here we go. So this is generally what we get, or the user gets. We get these long lists of results. But the thing about these lists is that they do not tell you anything about the relationships between archival entities like functions, which are broad activities of government, agencies, which are departments, which administer those functions over time, and the series of, of records that those agencies create over time. You don't get any of that really important information between relation, about relationships. You only get the lists of the entities. So hopefully we are moving to something which gives us an idea of the relationships. So this is the provisualizer tool and it quickly gives people a snapshot of what um, a search result finds in the archive. So here we're looking at photographic collections. We quickly see that there are 19 departments of government which have created records relating to photographic collections and there are 24 series of photographic collections. We go full screen and zoom in. Uh, you'll see the department, which is yellow, and the record series, which they create. And if you click on any of those, so this is the State Electricity Commission of Victoria. You'll go straight through to the landing page, which gives you more details around that actual series. I really need a mouse. You can move everything around a bit to get a better idea. If it gets too big, you can just zoom to fit. Move the whole thing around. So just a bit of the functionality there. 
Oops. So it's a way of searching and navigating the records. It's also a way of looking at the language as history goes on. We look at the language that the history makers use, such as the chief protector of Aborigines, lunacy, mental hygiene. What do these terms reveal about the society at a given point in time? The culture, the power, and that sort of stuff. So here we have the department, lunacy department. And we also have, uh, have things like the department of mental hygiene. So this concept of a person's mental state being, need to be clean, that kind of stuff, it's really interesting how language has changed over time. Same thing for treatment of Aboriginal people in Victoria over time, this idea of their protection. So if you want to use Project Visualiser in the future, there are some tips. If you search by broad dates, you get a sense of administrative change over time. Something like education, that's changed hugely over time from the 1830s onwards. You'll see all the different departments that have been involved. You'll get an idea of the politics involved with those broad functions like education, justice, Aboriginal affairs, women's affairs. They all serve political ends. They're not just change. Now, currently we're only searching across function, agency and series titles, but in the future we're hoping to search across the landing pages which describe those entities. So if you put in something like women's suffrage, you'll come back with all the records relating to women's suffrage, not just if it's in the title of a series or a function or an agency, but if it's got anything to do with that kind of activity, that'll come up too. Oops. Uh, all the data is open, so we've got all the nodes. Got about 18,000 nodes, functions, agency, series. Don't think we've got X. Oh, yep, there we go. So that's all the node data. That's all just freely available. Same thing for the edge data, all the relationships, got about 195,000 relationships between all the data. And that's just a URL to get that data. That's all it takes. And it's all open under a um, CC BY 4.0 licence. So it means basically you can copy and register material, you can remix, transform, build upon it. Uh, you can even use it commercially. All we need is some appropriate credit and indicative changes were made. So that's pretty standard with that CCBY licence. And the whole software is in a GitHub repository and it's all classified under Apache licence, which is totally open. So what that means basically mm -hmm. oops, <coughs> is that you can get the embed code we provide in a copy and paste. <coughs> Put that into your own website and you've got all the search functionality, you've got all the software for free, and just go for it. Yeah. Any questions? Digitized. Yes, that's right. Um, but you get, do you get the headings of everything when you search for a public or, or do you only get the 1% that's digitised? No, no, that's the whole collection we've got there, all the metadata we've got. So we've got about 15,000 series, we've got 2,600 departments or agencies metadata and we've got metadata about 339 functions or activities of government. So you get all that metadata that we've actually got and that comes straight through from our archival management environment through an API, 
So it's live dynamic data that's being updated every time it changes. So when we acquire new records and do new acquisitions and the volunteers index and, and create metadata for those records, that flows straight through to our archival environment and that flows straight through into this visualisation. So you don't just get the 1%, you get all the metadata we have about all the 100 kilometres of records that's available. Yeah. But unfortunately, because we don't have everything digitised, you won't end up with a digital object at the end of your journey. But, but you'd know you had it, so you could yes. see, then you could go and ask for something. That's right. Then you can come into the reading room and order everything and get the physical item. Cool. And Or if we do have a digital record at the end of that journey, you'll definitely get that. Yeah. Scanners and things in there, so people can throw We do, yeah. To, uh, trace in the trace face, or <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we do. We've definitely got um, camera set up, where you can, or you can bring your own camera, chuck everything onto a USB. Um, we can provide digital copies for everything you want, at a very small fee, and we're trying to digitise as much as possible to give you that digital object at the end of the journey, not just metadata. I mean, metadata is great, but in the end, it would be nice to actually have that digital object. Uh, what's the time frame for adding in the other um, chunk of data? This is the first question. The second one is, is there yep. a, <laughs> do you document the schema for, say, the uh, departments? Yeah, uh, listen, so I don't, I'm not an archivist, and I'm, I don't work in digitisation. What I try and do is work with people to make everything engaging and available on the internet. So we do have the government record keeping section who work with all the agencies around Victoria, take in the records, work out the schemes, that kind of stuff. What we've done with this data, we've turned it into our own data store and that's driving this visualisation. And on the presentation, which I'll make available to Fiona, that gives you access to the pipeline, the technical pipeline that gets that data and puts it into the visualisation. The schema it turns it into, takes it out of an OAI repository, um, turns it into RDF from, uh, um, and turns that RDF using the SIDOC CRM schema, which is generally used by museums for digital objects, and then turns that into two CSV files, one for edges, one for nodes, and that cr creates the visualisation. Yep. Now, that 1% of records that have been digitised, I've been with the archives for 12 years. As far as I know, that 1% has been around there for 12 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> what it's going to take for the 99% to get digitised is the political will, leadership and a hell of a lot more funding for that to actually happen. Because we've got a small pool of volunteers, about 100 volunteers, we've got 70 full-time staff, we've got 100 volunteers, we're now just about to get into online volunteering, but at the moment people are coming into the archive, they're sitting down at a computer, they're doing indexing with large volumes, they're doing a bit of scanning. We're just starting to get some real digitisation workflow, workflow, which is going to actually bring things up to scale, but it's taken 12 years for that to happen, basically. So we're a long way off with a huge amount of records. So don't hold your breath. <laughs>